Hey guys and girls, Pokerton King here back with another Flesh on Blood video. So this is the first of a series of videos that I'll be doing in this format. This is, uh, I've got a new desk, I've got a new setup now. So hopefully the, the quality and the kind of range of content that we can start making here on the channel is going to be a little bit varied and a little bit different to what I'm usually used to at least anyway. I know others are already making videos like this. Unfortunately, uh, I have to catch up. So... We're going to be talking about Tales of Aria today. It's one of my favorite sets, a set that I've opened tons of cases of, honestly, and I've got some really good memories of when the set first came out. Um, so if we look at the most expensive cards in this set, of course, we've got the Fable, Caution, Crossroad of Elements, Cold Foil. Uh, we're at about 262 here at the top. Uh, then, of course, we've got New, New Horizon, Cold Foil. Uh, that's not a shock to anyone, really. That's, you know, it's such a playable card, and there's a reason why it has such an expensive price tag, uh, 227 euros. And then, actually, we move into the Channel 8 Frigid, the Altar, which is uh, uh, just under 200 euros now. We are going to be particularly looking into that card, actually, because there's some interesting things that have been happening about that recently. Uh, then we've got the Spellbound Creepers again, another really good playable cold foil. Um, as to why is the price is so there and then we go down we've got crown of seeds crown of seeds sort of had a little bit of a tumble crown of seeds was really good of course um, but it's dropped its price a lot rampart of the ram's head again 81 euros both of those and then we've got the shock charmers and heart of ice as the last uh legendaries in this set uh, that are quite affordable and then we're moving into the the, the majestic cold foils here so we've got the voltaire um winter's whale well again which is banned that's why it's cheap and you've got all the pulses um the rainbow foil channel 8 frigid is the most expensive uh non-cold foil majestic same as the channel 8 frigid regular uh 1150 um, because again it's such a playable card it's really versatile and that's why it commands its price tag so we'll go into some specifics so I wanted to look into this channel late for Edge actually because I saw some interesting price rises recently actually. So card market's data isn't as good as TCG player. It doesn't show you the volume of sales. Um and it doesn't tell you know this, you know, it obviously we've got this graph here and it says like, you know, on the 22nd of June for instance, one sold at 199 euros, but was that the last sale? Um because you know, we have a big gap here between so like March and June um there were sales but for whatever reason it's not put in there usually it goes by every single month but it hasn't done that for that was just right maybe the, the lack of sales really but the price has been climbing actually really um since sort of april may time and the last sale actually which you know i, I didn't i hadn't actually really checked this on card market um but it, it's actually you know quite expensive so the, the cheapest one we have here is um 198.99 uh, and that's in austria uh, from a big seller again if you are in the uk you know how extremely difficult it is can be to find some singles because card market generally it's mostly european there's not very many uh uk sellers on here so the cheapest we got is neutral dan uh 200 euros which is the pretty standard price and then we sort of move up so there isn't a plentiful supply on here. I mean, some of these sellers have got three each, but again, you know, if you want sub 200, there's four. Um, and that doesn't include... So one of them is a PCG graded 9.5, actually, um, from Fabled Academy. And then the rest are near mint to mint. We've got a CGC 9, we've got a BGS 9.5, um there is photos actually on here of some of these yeah so cg i mean 400 euros for cgc9 that's not worth it i don't know i've never seen anyone grade fab or cgc i didn't realize they did that um, but nobody wants that so quite interesting there's not that many copies on the market honestly um and especially not for you know i don't even 200 euros isn't affordable but um it is a collector's piece let's be honest this is a perfect example of, I think, what Flesh and Blood should do more often. They obviously had the non-foil and the rainbow foil version, and then they had the alt art, which, you know, is a collector's piece, let's be honest. You know, players are most probably going to sell it because it's expensive and, you know, they can get money for it or they can trade it in for other cards they want. Um, 
some players might keep it, of course, but for the most part, most players I know anyway in the UK, um, any big hitters they want to sell so they can fund, you know, not just buying cards for their deck and stuff like that, but also, you know, travel for events and stuff. It is currently Birmingham calling right now. Um, so there's some interesting things that have come up in there, but maybe we'll talk about that um, after the weekend once it's finished. Um, so Tales of Aria, we'll go back to the singles list here because the other items on this list that I find quite interesting is the cold foil pulses. So if we go to the most expensive one, and it's just, is the, the Pulse of Eisenloft. So this is, Dropped quite a bit now. Uh, it's had some prices that sort of 30 to 35 euros. And we're at sort of a middle ground now. So there's 41 copies on it. There's quite a few copies on it. I don't know if any of these are. Someone's put mint. Interesting. I always find if someone puts mint, that generally means graded, right? Um, so I'm some put, there's a couple of names on here already that I'm looking at and I'm saying that I know. Um, shout out to Soho. Who's also another fellow content creator. So we got pretty good price on this one. The trending price actually is higher than what is available. Um, but there's only one copy available and it's from a low feedback seller. So people do generally. They're a little bit skeptical. Again, especially on card market, we don't have photos. It's not like eBay. Um, so it's you've got to be a bit more careful with the condition because generally a lot of cards, same as TCG player, I suppose, unless there's no photos. It's Generally, you can get a lot of cards that seem to be quite, uh, you know, affordable. And then you can get cards and then the, the, the condition isn't as described, unfortunately. Um, generally, most sellers I've experienced are pretty good. Then we've got Pulse of Vault Haven. There's a lot more copies of this one. Um, this is this actually had a bit more of a sort of tumble. It's a bit less regular sales. Um, so there's a couple more copies uh, at that low price point. And then we'll move down to the last one which uh, actually is my favorite pulse of vault even this one's actually going up interesting that's interesting comparing all three of them uh, this one's actually going up so i don't really know the meta very well so i wouldn't be able to speculate as to why but lightning ice um, interesting somebody might be able to put the comments below again there's a gap here between but we had a lot of sales around 17, 19 euros. And now it's up to 25. There is actually a copy, again, by this low feedback seller for less than that price, which is the trending price. Remember, when cards, you know, start trending up for a price. So we got price trends 22 euros. One day average is 24.95 and seven days 20. So you can see that gap here. And you got 30 day, which is slightly lower as well. Um, there is definitely a rise recently. Um, it could have be people buying copies up just because they're kind of looking around for things that they can buy uh, in this kind of market because it is a great market to be buying in um, and a bad market to be selling in and that's for most card games in the summer but flesh and blood specifically just because it doesn't have the exposure of a lot of the other big card games and a lot of these cards can't be absorbed because there just simply isn't enough people buying um, so I myself have got a place set of each of these in cold foil and I might get another copy each because I want to grade them. But honestly, I think, you know, there's there's enough there's enough supply out there. They're really nice. The Majestic Cold Foils, actually, these pulses are extremely hard to pull. Um, so I, I know I bought a copy of each. So I must have pulled six out of around about 15 cases. And I only pulled one channel like Bridget OR. So that kind of proves just how rare some of these cards are, honestly. Um, they're extremely hard to pull. Um, but if we move on to the boxes, um, which are very, very stagnant at this point, in fact. Um, so, Tales of Aria boxes. I wouldn't, I've never bought sealed, oh, no, I have bought one sealed box off Card Market, and it was a German History Pack 1 box when they first came out, and that ended up getting opened by customs. <laughs> so, I try to avoid buying sealed on there, but. It's not to say that you can't, um, but, you know, it just it happens. So you've got a plentiful supply here. How many boxes have we got in here? 139. Um, there's one here at 65. But again, the shipping's expensive because they're boxes to Europe. So 
um you have to factor this in obviously if you're ordering from within your country it'll be cheaper so the cheapest in here is total cards uk on interesting the total cards is on here uh 85 euros plus shipping they got 38 in stock so i wouldn't be buying boxes from there i'd be buying them from ebay this is where i bought i went on a a big old run of about three months where i was buying every first edition tales of aria box that came out and i opened a fair whack of them um this is when the price point went down to about 50 pound a box i think the box art is absolutely stunning um really really nice box honestly and i i just enjoy the set myself personally um so 70 pound here we got 65 with bids probably nobody else would bid on that honestly 79 there is a good deal here actually if we go down to this one at 70 750 so that's 12 boxes so that works out at around 63 pound a box i think which is extremely good and if you maybe offered 700 perhaps you know you could probably get it for 700 then that would be sub 60 pound a box so i don't know if there's there's more photos so he's put 12 boxes but there's a case underneath which would be four and that has been taped over let's have a look at the description maybe one sealed case one open case four loose boxes okay i think that oh i see yeah he hasn't really shown it very well in these photos but you can i think you can only put a certain amount of boxes on there um he has got 88.2 percent feedback though so that might be something you want to look into if you were interested in that deal specifically but there's a plenty for supply here honestly um especially when you're buying multiple you can get a better discount there's 10 here that's 72 pound 90 a box probably make an offer honestly um these are the blitz decks which are just ridiculously cheap uh, but you know there's a there's a lot of supply of tales of aria i think it's a set that people should be looking at honestly for me you know when people give me a list of reasons as to why i shouldn't be looking at something or buying something that just makes me want to buy it more honestly i think you know there's definitely a borderline between um saying things that others don't see and just being an idiot of course um but you know let's be honest here flesh and blood is coming up to its fourth year now um in the winter so just a couple of months honestly and I think, you know, these sets will, over time, be hard to find. I know Tales of Aria Unlimited is in plentiful supply everywhere, but you can't get the Cold Foil Pulses in there. You can't get the Channel Lake Frigid. You know, you can't get a Cold Foil New Horizon in there. Um, I don't have the the EV, honestly, of... Did we get rid of our list? Yeah. I don't have the EV of the value of it, honestly. I've opened some Tales of Aria boxes that are absolutely dud. And the reason why is because generally there's very little value in any of the majestics that aren't you know higher rarities if we look down here already we see the drop off um so if we exclude cold four we've got channel eight for the regular then the only two rainbow foil majestics that are on this list are terra sunder at 590 and then blizzard at 10 um and blizzard's only sort of recently kind of gone up a little bit more um and then you've got the common cold foil so we'll, we'll go to the second page just to because this is something again people when they make these kind of videos they just show the top ones but you need to see most of the majestics in this set are worth absolutely nothing so you're not going to get your value back um interesting there's a rare rainbow foil here and some common rainbow foils actually um, a couple of euro a couple of uh euros but for the most part the majestics in this set are worth nothing even in rainbow foil and there's a plentiful supply so ideally you're opening a case and you're ideally <laughs> you're going really for spellbound creepers or new horizon honestly um they're the two you want i mean crown of season rampart the ram's head you can get double cold foil legendary box uh, cases that is possible i mean if you can get boxes at what say 60 pound each if you buy multiple six to eight that's 240 pound a case right um it it is going to be hard to get your value back for the most part honestly um but i've opened enough and i like to take the risk honestly and i think you know you've got caution you know it's what one in 10 cases 
New Horizon, Channel 8 Frigid, Spellbound Creepers. Or alternatively, you can just simply buy these singles. Um, but I have a lot more fun opening boxes. Um, but now I can't open as much. Now I'm running a business, so it doesn't make sense for me to be opening up stuff. Unless I'm sending singles, but I wouldn't... As a business, I wouldn't be opening up Tales of Aria right now. I would be buying Tales of Aria, which I am doing. Um, but I'm buying singles and I'm buying sealed um, to keep. Because I'm hoping at some point, you know, in the future, when we've got a uh, living legend format and a lot of these cards can start getting used again. Again, remember, this set is elemental. This is very specific, this set. Unlike most sets, this set is extremely specific to the, to the three elementals. So if all three of those, or at least two of them aren't doing well, which they can't right now because, you know, two of them are LL then you're not going to be able to kind of there's going to be very little value in a lot of the majestics and that's the problem i find with a lot of the newer sets is that there's so many majestics and there's just very little value to them honestly um i know there's a lot of majestics in the early sets that aren't worth much at the moment but you know there's a there's majestics that in rainbow fall at least anyway are worth more than you know, five euros so but yeah, let me know what you think um, of this kind of format of video. It's not something I'm used to, honestly. Um, it's something that I need to get, I need to get used to because it's kind of something that I want to do more on the channel. Um, but I thought Tales of Aria was a nice way to start. It's one of my favourite sets. It's a great set, and I think it's something that not as many people are talking about. But thank you all for watching, and have a great day.